And let's get to the phones here. We have Minority Senator. This guy's kind of a troublemaker. Uh, Senator Jim Moylan. <laughs> good, good morning, Chris. Good, good morning, Sabrina. Good morning. Uh, you know, they got to get a drop box for you down there at Adaloop. You need your own drop box. <laughs> that, that would be nice. I, but I don't know if I can drive in and around Adaloop. I may have to get clearance before doing that. But <laughs> Maybe you could snorkel around from Boat Basin, you know, like a little Navy SEAL type thing. Come on in with your letters and just drop it in that drop box. Uh, uh, that is an opportunity and probably something I should be doing. Let's just get right into it, Senator. You had a release. I, I don't know if it was yesterday. We kind of touched a little bit on it with uh, former Senator Tony Addo, but this is about uh, the bonus pay for the directors, deputy directors, and we're talking about the COVID differential pay, which these uh, directors, the deputy directors, uh, you know, they call themselves quarantine shepherds, call themselves quarantine soldiers. Um, you know, when we spoke with Rebecca, she said that she hadn't had time to fill out her timesheets to get the COVID pay, but we know that a lot of them are going to do that. And so you're coming out and saying, hey, AG, hey, public auditor, there's something on the books that, you know, these uh, directors, deputy directors aren't supposed to be getting any bonus pay. Uh, that, that's correct. There's an existing public law by the 33rd uh, Guam legislature, uh, public law 123. Uh, titled Prohibition on Bonus for Unclassified Employees. So it's, it's in a coded law. It's, it's in the books. And it's really pointing out uh, that it, no bonus should be authorized in any form, lump sum, or, if, or, or partial to unclassified employees unless it is specified by law. And we don't have anything specified by law. So this is the current one, that no bonus should be paid. And what they... Uh, defined as uh, what a bonus is for the purpose of this section, a bonus or a bonus payment uh, shall mean the sums authorized or paid to an unclassified employee that is separate and apart uh, from or added to their base pay uh, to, of such unclassified employees for any purpose. So that's directly what differential pay is or, or double pay, right? It's that's what's currently there, the payment, but it should not be paid to unclassified employees. And if so, if it was, then that's, uh, they're guilty and the, and the law carries a misdemeanor charge. So it's, it's critical, I think, that, and we wrote a letter to uh, Attorney General Levin Camacho and also uh, same letter to uh, Benjamin, uh, Judge B.J. Cruz, our current uh, OPA. And it's critical that we get their opinion because uh, some media reports have already said that uh, unclassified employees have received their additional pay. And we're also concerned that when you're filling out a timesheet, it's not for the purpose of not being paid. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're tracking something, that's fine. But if you have someone unclassified or classified complete a timesheet, that's for one purpose only, and that's for payment. So we're hoping to get a response here soon from either uh, Levin or from BJ or, or both. That would be wonderful. And we can put an end to this because as it is uh, today, for public law 33123, there's no bonus payment for unclassified employees. I wonder what the response is going to be. And like, just realistically, Senator, do you even think you're going to get a response? Uh, in, in this case, uh, it should be one of the priorities. Uh, if we want transparency and we're saying we're honest, and we're doing everything by the books, uh, then here's, here's our proof. We've, we've checked out this law. I'm, I'm bringing it to the attention. I brought it to the public's attention as, as legislature to protect the public and also to protect the administration. If they wish to just uh, forget about it, well, then... Uh, forget then about it. You asked good. for an official legal opinion, right? I, I certainly did. Okay. Yes, I did. Yeah, you would think I, that I it would respond. That. Yeah. And I think it's very important that uh, Adeloup does get that, that reply. Uh, and then if, if it does, if they feel it does not apply, again, that will be opinion. But if they feel there's something we should look at and public law should be adjusted, just like what uh, Lieben was saying also for uh, double pay as well for the classified employees, that he feels that there should be legislation. I don't agree uh, because that's an executive order that placed the current uh, double pay in effect as it is today. But for the unclassified, that opinion should be uh, given. And the important part is that also uh, this was during, I'm pretty sure that you know, Judge B.J. Cruz, our current OPA, was actually a senator at that time. 
and probably knows the spirit of this law and what oh, it was no written way. for and how it should apply. But don't so you think that this differential pay compensation would have been uh, vetted by the governor's legal counsel before you know the governor decided that I'm going to implement this 15 percent uh, 20 per- five percent whatever I, I'm sorry I can't even There's remember 10, what the sliding scale is 10 15 and 25 percent yeah, yeah. Sli- sliding scale comp- differential pay compensation I, I would sure hope so um, but sometimes it's uh, the definition of chapter 19 it's within my powers to do whatever I so wish for it to <laughs> help it be are you right. talking about Title Ten? Uh, chap- uh, title Ten, Chapter mm-hmm. Nineteen. Right. The superpower. The superpowers. Yeah. Right. And it may or may not have been overlooked. And if it was looked at and considered, then then simply come out and, and say so. If not, then here let let's reevaluate it. And if it needs some adjustment, then that's up to the legislature to do any, any adjustment in the in, in the law. Yeah. So it's un- it's uncertain for me, and I. And I think it's our duty as a Senate uh, to bring these, bring this to issue. Right. And I, I sent a FOIA, uh, Senator, and I'm still kind of going through it. But it was the the intent of the FOIA was basically to find out who got the COVID pay. Right. Yeah. Because uh, I know you know, said that uh, some people have uh, reported that um, they've already got it, but you know I'm interested in the in the document. So um, I had sent a FOIA uh, requesting all the COVID pay records. Uh, they responded. I mean, hundreds of pages of uh, timesheets. So, we're kind of going through that, and I'll, I'll give you a heads up. Uh, but you know, on the, I mean, just the optics of it, right? We had so many comments about these uh, directors, uh, deputy directors, being management figures. And I mean, I know you uh, believe the law says what it says, but just from a, a spin point of view, wouldn't it have been so easy for Adloop to actually look a little humble on this and be, and, and maybe said, you know, yeah, there's a COVID differential pay, but I mean, because the governor had come out and said that her cabinet wasn't going to be getting it. And then she was like, unless they're dealing with the COVID. And now they're dealing with the COVID because they're working in the hotel quarantine. Yeah. That's, that's correct. Yeah, and the executive orders, uh, they're saying... Uh, that they won't. However, if they uh, qualify for category one right. or two, yeah. uh, then they could. I mean, because to me, it's just a bad smell because you have these directors, they're making at the very least 60 to 65,000, and a lot of them are making 70, 80, 90 grand. And I feel like that's compensation enough if we're asking nurses and public health to go in there with $25,000 salary or whatever. I, I don't know. I just feel like. The better look would be for these guys to say, "Yeah, we can. We're eligible, or whatever. We risk our lives. We are quarantine shepherds. We are quarantine soldiers. We are quarantine saviors." The governor believes we deserve special recognition on top of everything else we already got, but we're not going to take that COVID differential pay. How hard would that be? Not I hard. mean, what is it anyway? Ask the nurses. It's like two dollars. Well, that's right. if you're getting a nurse's pay. Senator, you know, during yeah. that that one-sided informational briefing last week, uh, were I was there. right? Did they explain um, the the shepherds? Were they working from the onset? Were they at the airport when those first flights came in? Were they at the days in or because Packstar didn't come into to play until a couple days later? Did they explain how that all went down? Were the shepherds there? The airport? Were they manning the other hotels prior to standing up Packstar? Right. I know eventually they were manning the airport, but what time did your question is more of what time did was it started? Hmm. Was it from day one or from day day pa- six? Oh yeah, from yeah. Packstar opening. Right. No, I I do not know uh, on that. Well, and talking to some of these uh, directors and and uh, Rebecca Rospicio specifically. They had said that the COVID differential pay wasn't even mentioned until four to six weeks into this detail. No, I'm not talking about. I'm just yeah. wondering when did they actually start showing up and you know yeah. manning? It because all like I know is that they were manning over the the pack star. Yeah, right. I mean, it, when we talked to Rebecca, it kind of sounded like when Duterte made that, and the governor's gone over this a lot. When he made that announcement that they were going to close the PI. There was a little scrambling to open these facilities, and remember, Rebecca had said something like, "They got a call in the middle of the night. Uh, can we go over to the airport and start quarantining people?" So, um, I guess it was like the, from the first 
Yeah. But they and weren't I, at Paxar. Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah, and I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't doubt it. You know, you're unclassified. You're at, at the. Uh, at, Back and call. Call of, call of the right. 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 And and so do they, uh, as well as they wish to perform at, at the state of emergency, and they stepped up to the plate. Uh, but also, you're talking about the optics, and how does that look when you had your, you were mentioning Harvey calling about the, um, uh, still awaiting for, for, you know, they've been out of jobs for for how long, and and their, their patience is running out, and where we see on the other end of the scale that, uh, the unclassified may may be saying, you know, I I did it out of the goodness as of my heart as as a shepherd, but, hmm. but yes, I'm eligible for five thousand dollars bonus I, I probably won't take it right <laughs> but it's, it's the optics of it and that's what and uh that's what does not sit well yeah i mean it also doesn't sit well that they keep going to bat for themselves i mean you know if you did so great let someone else talk about it there there exactly and from my side as the senate uh i want to ensure that it's, it's done properly and this is just to assist and i and if it is it, within the law then Fine. And then if it, if, if they do decide, no, we, we are not getting our differential, our our, uh, our our pay as unclassified, then then fine. And if they do, then that's their it's within the law, then then fine as well. So it's just questions to ask, and we want the transparency so the public can feel confident and and help us uh, move forward. What about a, I understand there's an oversight hearing tomorrow. Is that correct? Are you on, on that procurement? Are you are you on that committee, Senator? Um. Uh, the procurement, I no, but I will be part of that. Yes. So the one thing good with the Zoom conference is it's it, you, you're in your office or or you're at a certain uh, another venue, but you can always time in. So these Zoom conferences has been helpful. Mm-hmm. There's a difference, of course, where the the feeling of having somebody testify in front of you and the questions asked and that presence of one another there, it, it is a different off, uh, feeling. And actually, it feels uh, more. Um, Le- less formal, especially on the Zoom conferences. And if you wa- if you're able to watch us, you can tell sometimes we get up and just walk away as, right. as I do. But but I do come back. So yes, I'll I'll be participating in that because that's the procurement. And um, we were talking about contracts, and the invitee is the what legal uh, hmm. legal advisor for for the governor, right? Who I, I forget his, his Hi, name. Ken. Hi, Hi, yeah. Wait, he's yeah. actually yeah. going to answer questions. Is he showing up? Well, the, the, he is one of the invitees, and I have asked uh, in a letter form to uh, Senator Paris Sabina to uh, ensure uh, through her subpoena powers if mm. there's anybody there not on the panel as, as specified that we do uh, do subpoenas. Yeah, so she had, we uh, kind of broke that she was going to do this oversight hearing on, the, on this show, and right. um, she had indicated that if it came down to having to subpoena people, she would subpoena people. So I've been asking her, I haven't got a response. I'm wondering if anybody's going to get subpoenaed. Because honestly, Senator, it's kind of ridiculous that you guys allow yourselves to to get in these informational briefings with the Adaloof staff, and you can't even ask them questions. It's freaking ridiculous. It's, it's exactly. so ridiculous. And then you allow them to sit there and read 15 pages of, political nonsense and you can't ask questions and i mean you have to submit questions and what world are we living in what world are we living in that we're getting the people who are running the government of guam showing up to to address the senators and you can't even ask them a freaking question right i mean yeah, that's like john jr calvo's calvo's making 120 something thousand dollars in salary alone and you can't ask him a question yeah. in a public forum. In a public forum, right? And this yeah. isn't even the first time. And what we hear from from you guys is that oh, they won't even show up unless you agree to not ask them any questions. That is just ridiculous. And I don't know how you guys stand for that. I don't know how you stand for that. I don't know how you well, guys. Well, I'm can hoping <laughs> Sabina Flores doesn't stand for it, and she makes sure that people that are supposed to be there or that were had any part of this contract. Yeah negotiations uh shows up right and and yesterday we did have a zoom conference uh uh, and uh, again it was brought up but in my round of questionings um, as minority i kind of come to the end uh which is acceptable right uh and the presence of some of the directors were was not there so i called it out 
and I called out that, that I'm very disappointed and we're wasting everybody's time and the Zoom conference makes it so convenient uh, for everyone to just stop and give a few minutes and sure enough, uh, shortly thereafter, those directors, we were wondering where were they, they all of a sudden popped up. So it's a matter of the senators uh, calling it out and make it a strong voice and opinion because the public is entrusting them to ask the questions uh, that they want. I mean, God, it's basic. It's so basic, Senator, and I don't understand why we have, um, you know, people like the Speaker, like, I don't know, the rules chair also apologizing for this. Oh, yeah, they're going to come, but no, and then we'll, we can just put it in writing, and we're going to send them 8,000 questions in writing, and they're going to take five years to get back to us. Yeah, we, we can no longer do that uh, to the public. Uh, with this situation, especially with the pandemic of our health concerns and when our when our businesses are going to start back, getting back together, getting going and moving on with our economy, we must ask those questions in front. And it's not to put anybody on the hot seat, but it's to show the transparency and then give the confidence back to the public so they feel good about uh, how their operations of the government is running. And at this point, uh, I don't think we need to give anybody a pat on the back. We need to work harder on that and so we can give this confidence and move on. So, Senator, as far as you know, who is supposed to be appearing in this Zoom oversight hearing tomorrow? I think there's a couple of assistants under the legal staff that will be there, too. I'm, I'm not sure if uh, public health is one of the invitees, uh, but definitely. They signed, well, they didn't sign, but there was a contract with HSP <laughs> that was not signed by Linda and Pinko de Norsi. Okay. Uh, yeah, I yeah sorry that that's as much as on the invited guests it, right. it would be good if they were there as well uh so the committee chair uh that's uh, on her call okay so uh, but I, I do plan to ask my question you yes, said I legal know. legal staff I, I or legal aides a couple aides yeah there's a couple other uh ladies for, whose name for the governor's mentioned. office or I, I believe that's from the governor's or the, that division within yeah. that division. Well, we, you know, I, sp- I uh, so not the legal counsels, <laughs> mm-hmm. not invited. Uh, yeah. Well, they were invited. I'm pretty sure, but whether or not they show. Yeah. So uh, yeah. wait, I, no, no, no. But Senator, do you know yeah. whether or not they were invited or not? The legal counsel. No, no, I, I, I do not know. I, I heard a couple of names, but if they were personally invited, I, I do not know. Sorry. Can you send us that? What is that? You, find I mean, is there like a, li- a working list or some kind of document that shows like, hey, this is who we tried to call or whatever? Yes. And usually the committee chair will, uh, when we start the meeting, uh, let all the senators who are present and the media, I'm sorry, and the public know yeah. uh, who was invited and the purpose of this uh, uh, public hearing. Nice. So, I mean, if you have yeah. that, I mean, I can ask Senator Sabina too, but I touched base with her yesterday and uh, I know that she's getting all the, I mean, Wow, there's just an ocean of documents on this thing. So right. I'm assuming yeah. that she's working hard on putting on a good uh, oversight yeah. hearing. Yeah, it, um, she does have passion for for that. Uh, the procurement I hope process, so. and yes, yeah. and and she does dig into it. She's one that doesn't leave the, anything unturned. Okay. Um, I'm I'm sure she'll work hard to it. Well, I hope so right because if if we don't see the legal counsel there legal counsels there what's the point what really? is the point yeah. yeah and i hope I she did her due diligence and invited them well i think uh, it, i mean yeah. invited that's so nice or subpoena right. them or like whatever why, why are we you still know? playing nice you guys had to override a, a bill on transparency and we're still right. playing nice i mean and <laughs> going back to right. the muting of the media i, I d- hope we get her on this show because i want to know well she's calling and i want to hear it from yeah. her yeah. whether sure. who she and is I, invited I, right I'll send you a copy, but just a couple of days ago, I did write that that uh, to exercise her subpoena power. I saw that, yeah. Uh, good call. Yes. So, and you guys got to show the governor she's call. not the only one with powers. Oh, yeah, we have <laughs> subpoena powers. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> uh, so, yes, I'm looking forward to that and, looking, and I really want the question uh, answered directly. What do you want answers to? I, I you know, I have asked... Uh, uh, the director of Department of Public Health, uh, that question, uh, and I asked it twice on that public hearing that, that we had. The digital signature? On, on Zoom, yes. And, and to clarify and re-clarify. And it comes back to um, how Chris explains, I do not recall the call. Uh, and it's, it's all possible. So that's coming from, from that side. So which is, is that, that's the answer, and that's, I understand. So let me ask now the person that was involved with that. It was this the situation, you know, relieve my mind, help me understand. And then also, 
why are so many signatures missing altogether when we pull up the documents online? Why, why hasn't this been resolved? And I did hear the, the governor's explanation, and I, and I understand, and I, I appreciate that, too. What but was I, her, I, in your eyes, Senator, what was her explanation for that? Uh, I'm feeling that the situation was at a rush, and things were at, at their point at, at Adaloop needed to do what they must have to do right. and, and just put that aside and, and ram forward with it. Ram and, forward. And, ram right. forward. Ever onward. And, and just down, right? Full steam ahead. And they, and, I mean, yeah, it's a base, but how I look at it is they tried to ram this stuff through yeah. the civil and defense I, and the certifying officer like, oh, hell no, we ain't going to sign that. And so they said, how do we get out of this? Let's use the superpowers. Right. And which brings up a good point, Chris. Because uh, officials, uh, elected officials, come and go. But it, but it's those uh, classified employees at civil defense and right. and these contract workers that are there to advise the elected officials. By law, you must do it this way, and that's where you have to stop and put on the brakes. And then, as elected officials, we're going to say, okay, I understand your point. It's a misdemeanor. I'm going to go forward with or without you. Or, yes, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to abide by the law, and we're going to help expedite and, and move your process up as quick as possible. You know, move these procurement processes up as fast as can. Put all, all people on that, get it done. And so we can we can achieve that because contractually, uh, by contract, right, when somebody comes in to audit this, how, how is OPA going to audit something? Where, show me your contract because they're going to read and review. Nobody signed this. This is nothing I can audit. There, therefore, nothing is there for me to give an opinion on other than you should have signed a contract. You know, so, so that's where that we, as I, I believe, as, as uh, elected officials, uh, must listen to the classified employees' advice, and that they're advising, advising us as their duty, the proper way to perform the law, and understanding our excitement to get things done and, and mm -hmm. do it right. But yes, we still have to do it properly. So it, it's for the protection of the island, it's for protection of the the people, and protection of the government. Okay, um, Senator. Yep. Thank you so right. much uh, for your time, and, and good luck there. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, thank you. Have All a great right. day. Take care. Okay. Bye -bye. Wash your hands. Uh, okay. Senator Boylan, let's uh, keep with the uh, Guam legislature and get Senator Joe St. Augustine uh, onto the show. Good morning, Senator. Mor hey, morning, Chris. Um, I guess just first of all, there was a lot of rapid evolution that <laughs> happened. <laughs> Over the last uh, couple days, just I, if we could just get your response to uh, man. Let me just get the timeline on this. So on the double pay, we had the speaker come out. Um, with